once upon a time our today's once upon a time is on bundles on the tree aha uh-huh. bundles on the tree once upon a time there lived a devotee oh this fellow was so devoted to god so much so that the man was just devoted so one day the devotee was very sad and he was complaining to god and complaining loudly ah you god you don't take care of me i am such a big devotee of you i serve you day and night still why do i have to suffer the most in my life why do you seem as if you forgot me long time ago <laughs> and the devotee would complain and he would say you see god there are so many problems till i finish dealing with one another trouble is ready you listen to other you give happiness to everyone pray god only sorrow dear god what do i ever do to you <laughs> then just then He had a voice of God in his conscience. No, no my son. Everyone has their own sorrows and troubles. Each one gets to live a life according to their own karma. This is just your misunderstanding. But no devotee was not ready to listen to whatever God was saying. Finally, understanding his ignorant devotee god tired of explaining to him he figured out a solution mm-hmm. god said okay okay my son let me give you one more chance to change your luck so god directed the devotee towards a tree and said My son look at this big old tree everyone had tied their sorrows their pain their troubles frustrations illnesses poverty diseases worries etc and etc and etc in a bundle and hanged them on these very tree whatever may be your sorrow just go and make a bundle of all your troubles and hang it on that tree like all others this will solve your problem the devotee jumped with joy and as he was about to go to that tree god said but i have a small problem the devotee asked eh uh-huh. what condition oh god said my son i have a small condition for you to do what you are doing and the devotee asked okay what is the condition then this is what god replied my son When you have made a bundle of all your sorrows, troubles, just hang it on on that tree. Then you will have to bring any bundle already hanging on that tree for you. Allah. Allah. <sighs> the devotee felt this a bit strange. but thought well, well, well. it will be okay then he made a bundle of all his problems and sorrows frustrations and mentioned them and hung it on that tree after hanging it he thought okay one thing done now i will have 
No worries in my life. I'm happy, free at last. <laughs> but God said to take a bundle from the tree before returning. Okay, 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 okay. Then he looked around the tree thinking, Okay, which one should I take? Little one, will you be fine? Second moment, he thought, but I don't know what in it. I should take another one. But what if there is any serious disease in it? No, no, no. Well, I will take this one. But I don't know whose it is. Okay, what kind of sadness does it have? The devotee got confused and confused and upset. As long as it is not known what sorrows, troubles, worries, frustrations, illnesses, diseases that are there in other bergs, till then it seems fine. But if there is more sorrow in them, then, <laughs> them, then their own, what will one do? Okay, the devotee called God. Dear God, dear God, where are you? Your condition is so demanding. <laughs> and God said, my son, why? What happened? Just pick it up. Pick anyone you like and go home. It's all yours. The devotee at this point, realizing that God is not changing his mind, he fell on his knees. With the folded hands, he said, No, God, please, no. I was naive who considered himself the most unhappy. There are countless like me here, and I don't even know what is their sorrows and their concern. I know at least my own problems, my sorrows. I will fight with courage. I will face them and not run away from them. I promise you, my God. Thank you, God, for showing me the truth. Thank you for letting me know that there are other people who could be in deeper problems than I am. When you are with me, I can face any problem in this life. And my dear God, I will never complain again. God then smiled and said, This exchange offer is open to all forever. And the man smiled and, smiled and left and said, Never again, never again will I complain. I am not going to complain again. <laughs> and the devotee went home. He went home and the day was good. The week was good and the month was good. We are also going home. <laughs> but before we go, we need to ask ourselves, what is, what is this devotee teaching any one of us or even all of us this great my day? <laughs> my dear brother, my dear sister, this is some eternal truth. I want you to commit to your memory. Everyone is suffering, but we see only our own. That is why we are so worried. That is why we are so broken. That is why we are so frustrated. That is why we are so suicidal. That is why we are so done, so done, so done. In reality, many people are more upset than we are. In fact, many people are so upset, but they are still admiring us. When you think that you are, yours is so bad, there's someone who has just a prayer. How I pray that I just be like so and so, the way she is, just the way he is. And here you are preparing suicide. How now? If you are given another pastor's bundle, it's going to crush you. My dear brother, my dear sister, carry your bundle. Don't do it alone. 
God is with you. If you are crying, do not cry alone. Do not cry alone. Do it with God. If you are wailing, do not do it alone. Do it with God. He is with you. If you are giving up, do not give up alone. Do it with God. He is with you. Oh yes, he is. There are people in this planet whose count of problems is to the to the multiple of a thousand. You have had the power of two, the power of three, the power of ten. Think of someone who has your problem, the power of one thousand. And they are still smiling and waiting for tomorrow. Let us join the good wagon, not the bad wagon. I've always heard about the bad wagon. We are joining the good wagon where people are carrying their burdens but their their focus is on God the God who is bigger than our problems don't I love this my day don't I love Monday thank you make sure that you enter into this day into this week with some enthusiasm with some strength resolve and dedication to go through life holding the hand of the God who loves you eternally. Thank you. This is my day. My day. My once upon a time. My day. Our gospel today is taken from Luke chapter 13 verses 10 to 17. Last Saturday, we saw Jesus telling people that they should not be distracted from their own obligations by getting caught up in tragedies which happened to others, rather than wonder about the eternal salvation of others, they should pay more attention to their own situation. Today, we have an example of people so busy criticizing what others are doing that they are totally unaware of the emptiness of their own lives. We are told that Jesus was teaching in a synagogue on a Sabbath day. In the congregation was a woman who was suffering from what seems to be curvature of the spine for 18 years. There is a certain symbolism in the fact that she was badly stooped and was not able to stand up straight. Spiritually speaking, is that not also our problem too? Mm -hmm. So many of us are bowed down with the burdens and burdens and worries of our lives. In fact, nearly all the healings done by Jesus can be seen as symbolic of deeper afflictions from which all of us can suffer. And even at the same time, for example, being deaf, we can't hear God speaking to us. Being blind, we cannot see the truth or understand the word of Jesus in the gospel. Being mute, we can't or even won't proclaim our faith. Being paralyzed and having other crippling afflictions, we are not able to do the things we ought to be doing. Having leprosy, mm -hmm, we are cut off from relating with others or 
we cut other people off and being possessed by evil spirits in the grip of various compulsions and addictions. Jesus saw the woman, called her to him, and told her she was free from her affliction. Her affliction was seen as caused by an evil spirit, and Jesus had liberated her. He laid his hand on her, and immediately she stood up straight and began thanking God. One might expect that everyone present would also start thanking and praising God for what had happened to the poor woman. But no, the chief of the synagogue was indignant that the healing had taken place on the Sabbath because medical services were not allowed on the day of rest. There are six, 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 six working days on which to be cured. The Sabbath is not one of them, he said. The ruler of the synagogue was not a priest. He was responsible for conducting services, inviting people to read the scriptures and preach, and in general, of maintaining order. It was a layman who also had administrative duties, such as taking care of the building. Normally, only one person held this post. But sometimes it could be simply an honorary position. In a way, of course, the ruler was perfectly right. A woman who had lived with his kind of ailment for 18 years could easily have waited for just one more day to be cured. But that was not the point, as Jesus made perfectly it very clear. He accused the synagogue head as his like of pure hypocrisy. There was not one of them who would hesitate to take their ox or donkey from its stall on a Sabbath day in order to give it water. They put the needs of animals before that of a human being. And what could be more appropriate than to liberate this poor woman from the slavery of her affliction on the Sabbath? All the synagogue had could see was the letter of the law, not the spirit. He could not marvel at the healing power of Jesus and the deep compassion behind it. He could not see what he was in the presence of God's very power. It would be like someone at Holimer's criticizing the brevity of a lector's dress while being totally oblivious of the word of God she was reading, perhaps this very text. Mm -hmm. There is also the sinister possibility which was the case on other similar occasions that the woman had been put there deliberately to see whether Jesus would violate the Sabbath. It was not the Sabbath that some of the religious leaders were concerned about, 
but of gathering evidence to convict Jesus of heresy. The story is an example of taking the beam out of our own eye before dealing with a speck in someone else. Or of none being so blind as those who refuse to see. <laughs> On this I have... <laughs> I feel so good because... I relate with this, ah, mamma mia. <laughs> In the end, <laughs> we are told that Jesus' critics were left covered in confusion, while the ordinary people, often with far more insight <laughs> than their religious leaders, joyfully marveled at what Jesus <laughs> was doing. <laughs> you know, I am so happy because, you know, uh, I've been doing what I'm doing for so, so many years. <laughs> and I know there are some people in this republic of the world who will only comment if there was a problem. <laughs> and it's not, the, not, not that of, uh, you know, objectively making a correction or maybe seeking us some, some clarification. These are just toxic, toxic, negative human beings. Ah, Father Tulisikia. <laughs> Others are here to see what can we hear for the CK saying so that you can go and tell the Pope and Jesus. <laughs> and I have those human beings in this world. <laughs> Dear good people, <laughs> it is good to interact with the Word of God and allow yourself to be to be formed and to be transformed by the Word of God. The rest, we call them pettiness. <laughs> Thank you, and God bless you. <laughs> How I would pray that we become human beings who allow the word of God to challenge us, not to attack human beings because I don't like that person, because he is like this, she is like that. No, no, please, no. Apana, apana.